let's now focus on another way of categorizing software which is based on it being application software and we're starting to focus on productivity software in this video at least so first of all what is meant by application software well this is any software designed to carry out a specific task unrelated to the computer itself so by that i mean if you can do the task without a computer it is application software which might sound a little bit counterintuitive but for example microsoft word a word processor is an example of application software because you could do the jobs on word on paper right writing a document you could do on paper you don't need a computer necessarily it might be very useful but you don't need a computer to do it whereas something like antivirus software in this case windows defender which finds and removes malware on your computer this is not application software because a computer virus doesn't exist in real life we have viruses we might get sick with a virus but it's not the same as a computer virus so windows defender was created to solve a problem i suppose created by the computer and so it's not something we could do without it's not something we need without a computer therefore it's not application software this would be called system software instead so either application or system software and just to be clear those two categories are unrelated to them being open source closed source bespoke off the shelf etc it doesn't they're un unconnected right so microsoft word is closed source equally it could be open source they're unrelated categories so please don't get it confused another unrelated category is productivity software so this is a kind of subcategory of application software and productivity software is designed to carry out fairly common tasks easily and hopefully quite efficiently so by efficiently we mean quickly and hopefully without any errors or problems so there are four which are mentioned which you need to learn so make sure you learn these and if it says productivity software you mention one of these four examples first two are quite simple so word processors i mentioned microsoft word as an example but the general term is a word processor which is when you are using the software to create a typed document on the computer and they include features which will know things like spell checkers things like formatting tools to add highlighting to add bolding to add italics to change the font etc etc so good for documents which are quite uh, plain and just related to text they're not so good if you want really creative attractive looking documents because they're not really designed to be um, too flashy email programs are another example of a productivity software another example of application software so you know what emails are right you send formal messages over emails i put formal in brackets because i guess not every email is formal but i would consider emails to be more formal than something like a text message or a whatsapp or a message over voip something like that right so an email generally more formal for sending messages over a computer you can do things like add attachments to add a file to your message and of course you can email multiple people at once you can cc in people bcc in people to expand who you're messaging now the first of the slightly harder ones to think about is database software so a database is used to store what we would call structured data in effect when data is in a table it fits really well with a database right so if you are storing the details of all of your employees you're not going to do it over email you're not going to do it in a word processor instead you might make a database to have all of that data in one table stored in a very structured formal way normally if it's a big database there will be different tables which are related so you might have a table for your staff you might have a table for your customers you might have a table of salary details you might have a table of contact details all of them are separate but are connected together in some way and because they are connected in quite a formal way you can run queries on the data now a query is a question so you can ask the database for all of the employees earning more than forty thousand pounds or you can ask for all of your customers who live in london those sort of questions are queries where you can extract data from the database quite simply 
if it wasn't stored in a database, you might have to go in and search for the data yourself. But because it's really structured, the computer can find the data really quickly. Now, databases are generally quite plain and you wouldn't show it to a customer because they're just for pure data usually. But you can make things a little bit more attractive by running a report. A report is where data is extracted and shown in a little bit of a more presentable manner. Um, but still databases you wouldn't use, like I say, to show customers or show people who are not in IT because they're quite technical and quite um, extensive sometimes. Just to show a few examples of what I mean, here is a picture of Microsoft Access, which is Microsoft's database software. You might have it on your computer if you want to try it out. Here we've got, um, we've got how many tables? Three tables, albums, artists, and genres. So it's storing data about bands. And you can see the two tables here, artists and albums are connected. The albums table has got five columns, album name, release date, artist ID, genre, album ID, it's got a key next to it. Same with artist ID because the key enables you to connect these tables together. At the bottom, kind of highlighted in orange, is a query. So the person is trying to select the albums, the genre, the release date, when uh, the artist's name is Iron Maiden. So you're able to specify a band in this case, and it will give you just the albums from that band. So the query was run, the database found the data and returned it to you really simply. Now, hopefully you can see what I mean about it being quite plain, like you wouldn't really want to show this to anybody. Um, you'd want to format it in a better way. And a report can help you do this. This is an unrelated report where there is a graph, uh, a chart, I should say, made. There's a little table at the bottom, some colors. It's a little bit nice to look at. It's still not that presentable, but report is a little bit more attractive to look at. Going back though to look at our final example, which are spreadsheets. So something like Microsoft Excel is a spreadsheet. Um, so spreadsheets are used to analyze mostly numerical data. So by analyze, really I mean do calculations because there are lots of tools built into spreadsheets enabling you to do quick calculations. Things like functions, like an average function, like a min function, a maximum function, things like formulae to be able to uh, make decisions and uh, check for errors. These are used to calculate usually numerical data, so numbers. Use a lot for financial data. You can make predictions based on it. Uh, you can make graphs and charts quite easily. Whereas something like database software is not really designed for it. You can't really do calculations as easily. The spreadsheet is for actually doing stuff to data. Database is more for storing the data longer term. Again, just showing some examples actually of my own data here. At the top left is a snippet of a table I made for some mock exam results. You can see not everyone in my class has done amazingly, um, but I calculated percentages automatically. I compared it to the target grade automatically, add a little arrows to make it more clear who is performing well and who is performing not so well. So that was done automatically. All I typed in was just the total, the grade boundary uh, or the grade was calculated through a formula, this massive formula down bottom right using an if function, which calculated uh, or checked to see if their grade percentage was greater than the gray boundary. Uh, it did it all for me, it saves me having to type in all the answers myself. So it's much more automatic, much quicker than if I did this maths myself. And graphs and charts, I'm sure you've seen before, but it's quite straightforward once you've got a table in the spreadsheet to automatically get in a chart, makes it more attractive to look at. You might embed this into a report, into an email to make it more clear what is going on.